Good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome to uh, St. Matthew's for our, our special service this morning. You may have noticed we have a pool at the front here. We've got uh, three people being baptised uh, this morning and it's great that we can gather for, uh, for this celebration today. Uh, we uh, Just a, a few things just to say um, before we kind of dive in. Um, firstly, thanks to some wonderful help from Jay yesterday, um, the, uh, the chapel at the back of the room is now available as a usable space again. Um, so we just want you to know that if you're here with a little one who isn't already going down to, uh, to jam this morning, um, if you would find that a helpful space to use, if they just need a bit of uh, freedom to roam and to make some noise, you are welcome to use that space. You are equally welcome to stay with them in here. Um, children are very much part of the church family here at St. Matthew's, and so we don't want you to feel you do need to leave the room. The space is there if you would find it helpful this morning. Um, the second thing, just to, to say by word of explanation, when we come to the baptisms, we've kind of been through numerous versions of how this baptism was going to look, I think it's fair to say. Um, and uh, so the, just, uh, just to make sense of what you will see when we come to that, in terms of distancing and so on, um, Chet and, uh, and I have been able to form a bubble, um, and so uh, I will be able to baptise him in the usual way, um, and uh, Jay is able to, to help as part of uh, the, the Coley household um, to help with the, uh, the baptisms for Brandon and Holly. Um, it's also worth mentioning Lacey, uh, I think, just now. Uh, Lacey was due to be baptised along with the others this morning, but due to um, Covid doing the rounds uh, in the schools um, has had to postpone hers for a month. So do let's uh, remember Lacey this morning as she kind of watches on later and looks forward to her own baptism in a few weeks' time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, from different lives, we come to worship. From good weeks and bad weeks, we come to worship, bringing great times and painful memories. We come to worship, needing healing, needing peace. We come to worship. To the Almighty God, we come to worship. To the King of Kings, we come to worship. Together, we come to worship. So at this point, we're going to have uh, the first of our songs uh, for this morning. Um, and uh, the, so the four songs that we're using today have been chosen by the four uh, who are being baptised today and, and in a few weeks' time. Uh, and so the first of those is the, is the goodness of God, uh, remembering God's goodness. And uh, whilst we're inside, we do hope we'll be outside uh, at the end to sing on the car park. Um, but whilst we're inside, we, we, uh, we're not supposed to be singing with our masks on, but we can worship in all kinds of other ways. So feel free to use the words, to speak them, uh, to pray in your own way, to, to worship in whatever way you feel comfortable as we uh, enjoy this uh, song together. So uh, would you like to stand with me if you're comfortably able to do that?
in a moment of quiet, let's just call to mind those reasons we have this morning to give thanks to God for his goodness, for all the ways we have known his faithfulness and his provision. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We praise you and we worship you. For you are good and your love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Do grab yourselves a seat. As we come into uh, the presence of God and uh, remembering all of his goodness uh, towards us, we, we also remember that so often we take that goodness for granted. So often we choose to go it alone without much reference or regard to uh, all that God has done for us. And so we pause just now for a short time of confession, bringing before God those ways that we just know our lives haven't kind of lived up to his goodness haven't matched up to his faithfulness, haven't reflected his grace. And so we just call those things to mind in the quiet now. Lord, we have taken your goodness and your kindness for granted. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have chosen to do things on our own without regard for you, without looking to follow your leading. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We haven't always reflected your goodness and your grace to those around us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may the Father forgive us through the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of his Spirit for all our days. Amen. We come now to our Gospel reading for this morning. If you want to follow along, you see on the screen there it is Mark chapter 6 and we're going to pick up halfway through verse 6. Uh, through to the end of verse 13. Mark chapter 6. Uh, one of the things that we do each week is we, uh, we mark the importance uh, of the gospel, this central story of Jesus to who we are, and we mark it, its importance by standing together. So if you're comfortably able to stand, would you stand with me now? And hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Graham is going to read for us. Oops, I lost it. Then Jesus went, from a, went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a stuff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This is the Gospel of Christ. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the Gospel your countless gifts of grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
do please grab yourselves a seat. We uh, are in, uh, at the moment, we're in a series on Exodus, uh, as you'll see on the screen there. We've been uh, kind of drawing some parallels between the story of God bringing his people out of slavery in Egypt and freeing them and bringing them towards life in the promised land. And uh, parallels between that and us as a church coming through this season of, of the, the pandemic and, and in both cases needing to figure out what does life look like in a new and changing landscape. And there's this, this constant tension in the story of, of, the, of God's people looking back to what they had and what they knew and what was familiar to them, but also recognising their need to move forward into where God was leading them. So previously we've seen that God, was, God has freed his people from slavery in Egypt, uh, but, but before too long they're grumbling and complaining. And God responds again and again with grace upon grace, giving them bread uh, to feed them and sustain them. That's what we had last week. Now, right at the beginning of the series, we, we heard how Pharaoh, uh, the, the leader of Egypt, how he expressed this question, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? And then we saw how God begins to answer that question through the plagues. Each time there is a plague, the Lord says, this will happen so that you may know that I am the Lord. And then by the end of the plagues, that, that line changes slightly and it says that the nations may know that I am the Lord. Well, today we're in Exodus uh, 17 and 18. Uh, if you want to have those uh, open nearby somewhere, Exodus 17 and 18, and we've got to the nations. Uh, in, at the end of, of chapter 17, uh, the, uh, the Israelites are attacked by the Amalekites. There's this uh, conflict between them. Uh, but actually, uh, if you're interested and you want to look this up, you can trace this conflict all the way back. A conflict that goes way, way back, all the way, in fact, to Jacob and Esau. It's a long-standing conflict between these two nations. Uh, now, just after this conflict has happened, we're going to pick up in chapter 17, verse 14, where it says this, Then, then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, For hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. Those are quite strong words, aren't they? Here we see that God, the Lord, stands against those who actively oppose him. In fact, it even says God will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. This is not a neutral stance from the Lord. And in verse 16, I just want to clarify what it's saying there. Um, For hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. What it's saying there, it's not kind of, we might tend to think of uh, lifting our hands in worship. Um, that's not the picture here at all. For hands were lifted up. It's describing those who were shaking their fists at the throne of God in defiance, defying God's rule and reign. Now that stance is not unique to the Amalekites. It happens all the way through the scriptures and all the way through history, even to today. In Romans 1, Paul describes it and explains it like this. He says, we have all loved the creation more than we have loved the creator. In other words, we, we don't want God, we just want his stuff. We want the good things that God has given us, but we then want to reject the gift giver. And Paul says we refuse to acknowledge God. In other words, we, we love to kind of pat our own backs when things are good, and then to blame God when things are bad. We have this compulsion to give ourselves credit and God blame. And if that's the line that we pursue, then we end up with trying to make God more of our servant than our king. Now, it's all good with God when, when our desires are met and we have the things that we, that we want, but the moment that isn't happening, suddenly God is in the dock. And we accuse God of not being good because we don't think he's giving us the things that we deserve. That's raising our fist against the throne of God. And it's foolish. We so, so easily side with the Amalekites. 
Well, what happens then is we get to chapter 18. We've just had this, this battle scene and this bold statement uh, from, from the Lord. And then we get this strange turn in the story when Moses' father-in-law turns up, a guy called Jethro. Jethro is a, a priest of Midian and uh, also, importantly, a Gentile. He is like the Amalekites. He is not part of the people of Israel, not part of God's people, at least not yet. And he comes along and he begins to hear word of what God has done for his people Israel. I want us to pick up in chapter 18, verse 8. Moses told his father-in-law about everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake, and about all the hardships they had met along the way, and how the Lord had saved them. Jethro was delighted to hear about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel in rescuing them from the hand of the Egyptians. He said, praise be to the Lord who rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and of Pharaoh and who rescued the people from the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all other gods for he did this to those who had, who had treated Israel arrogantly. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and other sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses, with Moses' father-in-law, in the presence of God. This is a wonderful story of salvation. Let's just remind ourselves the bigger picture again. God has said that in, in his deliverance of Israel out of Egypt, that the nations would know that he is the Lord. And that's what we're seeing happen in these two sets of verses today. The Amalekites, they see what the Lord is doing and they respond with violence, raising their fists against the throne of God. We will not bow, we will not serve, we will not love, we will not come in and join in with what you are doing here. But then we see Jethro, Jethro the Midianite, and he hears and sees and concludes for himself that surely all these other gods are no gods at all. This is the Lord. And he comes into the presence of God and his people and shares bread with them. Again, this is a pattern we see continuing all through history and right down even to today. There are those who rail against God and seek to blame God for all they perceive to be bad in the world. And there are others who see the hand of God at work and come to recognize his goodness and his grace and respond by joining in with all that God is doing. That's what these three are doing this morning in their baptism. They're choosing to stand and to say, Lord, we've seen what you're doing. We've seen that you're good. We've seen that you're faithful and we want in. We want to be part of that life with you. And as they do that, they come to be part of God's people, what we call the church. And you know, I, I love the church. We are such a mixed bunch of people. If you haven't taken the moment to just look around the room, why don't you look around you now? We are so beautifully different to one another. I know that in this room, there'll be those who were raised in church and never knew it any other way. And those who were raised far, far from God and have come to see his goodness later in life. There are those who perhaps have never sworn in their life and have had to make up your own swear words, and, and others who perhaps used to swear like a trooper. There'll be those who left school with not much to show for it, and those who have a degree or two. Those whose first language is English, who, 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 who are from here, and others who have traveled the world and speak Igbo or French or other languages too. There are those who have just cancelled any plans they had for Wednesday night this week and others who are looking blankly thinking, what has he just said that for? I always find it amazing as we look around the room on a Sunday and think, what else would bring this group of people together? What do we have in common except that we are recipients together of God's grace in Jesus? We are those who have been transferred out of the kingdom of the Amalekites and into the kingdom of God, away from raging fists against the throne of heaven and into the kingdom of his beloved son. And to this day, these two kingdoms are in play. 
We don't necessarily know the first by the name uh, the kingdom of the Amalekites, but, but the principle stands. There are those who raise their fist against the throne of God, and there are those who raise their hands in praise. There is no other kingdom for you to belong to. It is one or the other. You are part of one of these two kingdoms, and today Chet and Brandon and Holly are declaring their allegiance to Jesus and his kingdom. Absolutely. Someone's excited. It's good. What we then get is, uh, just to mention briefly as I finish, in, in the rest of Exodus 18, from kind of verse 13 onwards, these next few verses, we then get Jethro organizing Moses. I don't know whether Moses was just not that organized or, or what, but, but Jethro, this guy who has just been saved, he has just been welcomed in to God's people, and straight away he has a role to play that is fundamental to the life of God's people. I love the way God does that. He doesn't say, get saved and then do your time in the pews before you get stuck in. He says, Jethro, you're part of my people now. Can you please do something about Moses' organizational skills? Can you get him a, a wall chart or a planner? Can you get him a rotor system sorted? And just, <laughs> I love the fact that that's the second thing that got a week. Oh, that's amazing. Love that. Um, so Jethro, he comes into God's kingdom and straight away he's involved. And he gets Moses to one side and he has this conversation, the sort of conversation a father-in-law has with his son-in-law. And he says, look, Moses, I see what you're doing and it's not good. You could do better. If, if I were in your situation, what I would do, I would appoint some leaders to help you. Some leaders over a thousand, over a hundred, over 50 and over 10. Let them deal with the things that they're capable of dealing with and then let them bring the big stuff to you. And it's going to work much, much better all around. And you know what I think uh, God is doing here, other than just saying that organization is no bad thing, it is a perfectly good spiritual gift to have, I think the bigger picture, what God is doing here through Jethro, he's ordering and organizing his people so that they are ready to receive the law from Mount Sinai. We're about to get to two of the most important chapters in scripture as Moses receives the law. And Jethro is involved along the way to make sure God's people are ready for that moment. Now we're going to see more of this uh, next week when we look at chapter 19 properly, but you know, that's, that's where we're going. They're about to arrive at this mountain where God will shape them to become more fully his people, to show them through the law what it looks like to live a life that is pleasing to God. But all I want to notice really for now is that salvation came before the law. God's people were freed from slavery in Egypt before they were given the commandments to follow. Moses doesn't show up in Egypt saying, good news guys, there's a plan, there's a plan. Uh, uh, God has a plan to set us free. If we can just do these 10 things, just 10 little things, just don't kill anybody, don't cover anything, don't worship any of the gods. If we can just do these 10 things, then God will set us free. No, it's not like that at all. Think about it. What does Israel do to get out of slavery? Well, apart from a little whinging and whining, nothing. God saves them out of his grace and mercy towards them. And then they have the audacity to moan, oh, what are we doing out here in the wilderness? The God, there's nothing, there's nothing to eat except for the magic bread that God puts on the ground for them every single night. Oh, but what are we going to wash it down with? We've got no water. How about some water, some magic water coming out of the rock that Moses just struck with the staff? Grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. This constant reminder through the story of Exodus that, that salvation, being set free, comes before the law. Now, the law is important and it is crucial, and we'll get to that. But first, we need to understand that God sets us free up front. It's nothing to do with anything we do to earn it. All of us fall short of the glory of God. All of us need to be recipients of his grace. And so, guys, as you come to baptism this morning, you just need to be reminded that, that you're doing 
When it comes to your salvation, your doing, the things that you have done, haven't accomplished any of that. Jesus doing on the cross has accomplished everything for you. You were set free first and up front. Now the law has an important role as we live in response to God's grace. And we see as the Old Testament goes on that the law becomes something beautiful to those who are living under grace. David, one of the great leaders of the Old Testament, he said that God's law was sweeter than honey. That, it, that when he woke up in the watches of the night, it was God's law that he thought about. And not just because it was boring and he wanted to get back to sleep. He loved thinking about it in the middle of the night, staying awake and just chewing it over and enjoying the fact that God had given them this way to live. Because for those under grace, the law becomes the path of life. But outside the grace of God, the law sounds a lot like death. Just as I finish, I want to mention two of the values that we hold uh, as a church here at St. Matthew's. The values of welcome and the value of expectancy. The value of welcome kind of speaks for itself. It's a, it's a value that says you are welcome here, no matter what. No matter what your background, no matter where you're coming from, no matter what stuff it is that you have going on in your life, you are welcome here at St. Matthew's, and more importantly, that you are welcome, you have a welcome from God. You are welcome into the presence of God. God welcomes you and invites you to come to him as you are. He gives you the freedom up front. But then we hold alongside that the value of expectancy, because it's, you know, there isn't a license here. It's not like we just kind of, because it's all about grace, we, we get a free pass to do what we like and to live how we like. Again, Paul deals with this in his letter to the Romans where he says, you know, should we sin more just so that we can get more grace? Is, you know, is that how it works? And he says, no. No, if, if that's what you're thinking, you're showing yourself not to be a follower of Christ at all. The call to follow Christ is a call to obedience. It is a call to come under the law. And so we hold alongside the value of welcome, the value of expectancy that says, actually, God is in the business of transforming lives, of making us more and more like Jesus, that we might reflect his glory more and more as our lives with him go on. And so we come to God as we are, but we don't stay that way. We're taken on this lifelong journey. And, and today is a significant milestone on that journey for you guys, but it is a journey that will continue the rest of your lives as we seek to become continually more and more like Jesus. So there are these two kingdoms right now that are active in the world. There is a kingdom which will one day be utterly destroyed and removed from the world and one that will experience ever-increasing joy in the presence of its king. One that, that raises its fist to the throne of God and refuses to bow the knee. The other raises its hands in praise of the one who gave it all and chooses to submit willingly and freely to Christ. Each one of us in this room belongs to one of those two kingdoms. So before we come to the baptism, I just want to give us a moment to, to pause and to take stock and to think, actually, which of those kingdoms am I living in right now? Based on what we've just been listening to, which of these kingdoms uh, am I standing in, am I living in? And here's the deal. A life lived under the law is pleasing to God, and Christ has fulfilled that law for us. And now he dwells inside us. If we're his followers, he dwells inside us by the Holy Spirit. And therefore we are seen, when God looks on us, he sees us as spotless, blameless in his sight. And therefore we're free to pursue the Lord in light of that. And I wonder if we were to do that, how much more joy would we have? Knowing that salvation comes before the Lord, that God in Christ has, has set us free, and therefore, that when we, when we stumble in our efforts to follow him and to be obedient to him, that he will just gently pick us up and restore us. 
If you are already a follower of Jesus uh, this morning, you might want to renew that commitment along with those who are being baptised. If that's not a step that you have taken yet, then maybe that is something you would like to do this morning. There are some words coming up in the service where we're going to be declaring and making promises and those being baptised will be doing that. You could echo those words yourself and choose to start this journey of coming in to the presence of God. Why don't we pause just a moment to be quiet before I pray. Father, we thank you that you shower us with grace upon grace. Not that we deserve it, not that there's anything we've done to earn it, but but out of your goodness, out of your love for us. And so, Lord, we're sorry for those moments where we've kind of raised a fist and shaken it against the throne of heaven. And instead, we choose to, to come back into your presence, to receive your grace. and to seek to live lives of obedience to you. Knowing that in your presence there is fullness of life, there is joy, there is hope, there is peace. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We uh, come now to... uh, towards the baptism part of our service and uh, first of all I'm just going to ask the candidates to uh, to say a little bit uh, to us so Chet do you want to come to this microphone just here I'll come a little bit closer because I'm quite a long way away so Chet welcome we're so excited to uh, to be here at your baptism this morning and I just um, thought it'd be great for you to just share a little bit of your journey with us uh, as to kind of so where kind of where were you before this little journey started better in a way so um so what what happened to kind of to to change that how did how did you end up here approximately three years ago um i was going to digbeth dining with um with a friend of a church um she can't be here today but her representatives are here hi guys (laughs) um yeah so faye i'm talking about faye yeah so I picked her up, we went to Dibbeth Island, we went to meet some friends there, and um, we got chatting on the way back, I was dropping her off back at home. And um, I remember at one point she said to me that she was a child of God, Mm. and how she wasn't worried about things, and I just thought to myself, why can't I have that feeling? And then I started doing a bit more investigating, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what, um so you, you started investigating. I know you came and did Alpha with us, didn't you? And yeah, kind of yeah. Brought your questions along. So kind of what, what happened to kind of bring you through to this point then? Yeah, I think um, prior to Alpha, um, I'd done a bit of reading with the help of Faye as well. She guided me in different directions and told me where to go. And obviously she, then she introduced me to yourself. Um, and then from there, I went on to Alpha. And I think at that point, even when I joined Alpha, I knew where I was going. I just needed confirmation. Um, and I think Alpha did that for me. Wonderful. And so what, where, where are you at now then? What, what difference has, has all of that made? Uh, I just want to go full steam ahead now. You know, I'm, I'm ready. Absolutely. 100% ready for everything. So, yeah, I want to just get involved. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. You. Well, thanks.
Wonderful. So we've got Brandon and we've got Holly. Um, Brandon, you just, you just want to say a word or two about kind of why, why do you want to be baptised this morning? I want to be baptised to show my love for Jesus. I can't repay him for his sacrifice for me, but I can live in a way that honours it. And I can promise to dedicate my life to him. Awesome. <laughs> You want to swap round with Holly a moment? And Holly, I'm just going to drop that microphone down, down okay. a touch. So, Holly, do you want to just say a word about why why do you want to be baptised? Yeah. So, um, I like to be baptised. I can believe Jesus in the landship. Great. So at this point, I need uh, all three. So you just let um, check come past you a moment. And if you want to come back to where you were, that's brilliant. Have you got your words with you? You can tell we rehearsed, can't you? <laughs> Wonderful. So this is like the, uh, the the formal presentation of the candidates: Chet, Brandon, and Holly. Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ has told us that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of water and the Spirit, and has given us baptism as the sign and seal of this new birth. Here we are washed by the Holy Spirit and made clean. Here we are clothed with Christ, dying to sin, that we may live his risen life. As children of God, we have a new dignity, and God calls us to fullness of life. So Chet, do you wish to be baptised? I do. Brandon, do you wish to be baptised? I do. Holly, do you wish to be baptised? Yes, I do. Wonderful. Good to know. Um, and then uh, a question for all of us. You've got this on the screen as well. Uh, this is for you, the congregation. Faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, will you welcome Chet, Brandon and Holly and uphold them in their new life? in Christ. With the help of God, we will. And so uh, I'm looking to, uh, to Gail and Jay at this point uh, as, uh, as parents. Uh, so Jay and Gail, the church uh, receives uh, Brandon and Holly with joy. Today we're trusting God for their growth in faith. Will you pray for them, draw them by your example into the community of faith, and walk with them in the way of Christ? And in baptism, they begin their journey in faith. Will you care for them and help them to take their place within the life and worship of Christ Church? Wonderful. So I'm looking to you guys at the front here again now as we come to the decision. This is your, your uh, kind of declaration that you're making. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent of them. I repent. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I turn to Christ. I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. I submit to Christ. And do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. I come to Christ. Amazing. So we're just going to pray over the water uh, that will be used in a moment. Uh, praise God. I think there might be a response on the screen, maybe. Ah, oh, maybe not. Uh, praise God, who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. 
Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we baptise into his fellowship those who come to him in faith. Now sanctify this water, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, they may be cleansed from sin and born again, renewed in your image. May they walk by the light of faith and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We come now to the profession of faith. Uh, so can I invite all of us to stand if you're able to do so? And let us affirm together with those being baptised our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I, I believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God. Father, Father, Son, and, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Chet, is this your faith? This is my faith. Random, is this your faith? This is my faith. Holly, is this your faith? This is my faith. Amazing. Guys, do you want to take a seat? And, um, yeah, we're, we're getting ready to go in the pool, so I need to loosen my microphone. So, Chet, do you want to join me? The first thing, <coughs> excuse me, first thing I'm going to do is just make a sign of the cross uh, on Chet's uh, forehead. Okay. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. All the way to the front with me. Yeah. Okay. So, Chet, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. make your way over. So again, I'm going to make the sign of the cross on your uh, forehead, Brandon. This is just a reminder that your, your life now belongs 
to Christ, that everything you do is lived in light of the cross. So Brandon, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. So Brandon, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then Holly, do you want to make your way over? It's nice and warm though, isn't it, Holly? Nice and warm. Nice and warm. Do, you want to, do you want to face face that way for me? Perfect. So same again. I'm going to make the sign of the cross on your forehead first, okay? So Holly, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. You're down in the water. You okay? Okay. So Holly, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we've got some words for, uh, for everybody to join in with uh, at this point. So we're speaking to uh, these three who have just been baptized. And we say to them, do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly against the disciple of Christ, against sin, the world, and the devil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness, restore in you the image of his glory, and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. And may God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. Are we ready to welcome them in a moment? Uh, some words on the screen. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same heavenly father. We welcome you. So at this point, uh, we're going to disappear for a few moments to get dry, and uh, Maureen is going to come and lead us in a short time of prayer. So Maureen. Well, 
follow that. <laughs> uh, well, shall we just send up, uh, we'll just uh, turn now to God and uh, pray to him. Um, I want you this morning to help me with these prayers and join in. Um, the first is that through this year of isolation, well, it's been a bit more than that for some of us, I want you to thank God for something, anything that it could be, in your own heart and in your own mind, that has helped you through this year of isolation. Uh, for me, I think the one thing that really helped me through was, believe it or not, my phone. The fact that I was able to contact other people uh, on a daily basis and they contacted me as well. And especially during the time that Graham was in hospital, I was, that was the only contact I had with him, was through my smartphone. So first of all, Father, we have all had problems over the past year with the COVID pandemic and most of us being in isolation in our own homes. And we thank you, Lord, that you have been with us at every single stage through the past year. And especially we thank you for one thing in particular that helped us through those days. Father, we thank you that though we couldn't meet with others, you were with us every step of the way. Amen. There are still people who are suffering from what they call long COVID in all sorts of ways. And now we bring them before you, Father, that you would draw near to everyone who is still suffering from COVID in whatever form or shape it may be. A lot of it seems to be very tiredness, lack of being able to taste the food, and who are still suffering. We pray for those who are still mourning the loss of their loved ones that they suddenly have been taken from them in the past year. Heavenly Father, we pray, and Lord Jesus, we pray that you will draw close to all of these people and be with them in these coming days. Help those who are still suffering from long COVID to get over their uh, the problems that they have and be able to get back to being normal as we pray for us all that you would help us all to get back to being normal we pray for those who are finding it difficult to come out of isolation there are some who have been so spent so much time in their own homes they're fearing taking that first step outside of their doors we pray for them lord that you will give them the courage and the determination to get out of their own homes and meet up with other people again in a safe way. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers for these people. Amen. Now in other parts of the world, I mean, we'll just pray for Canada now. The western coast of Canada has, has suffered a terrible heat wave if it gets to 30, I will. I dread to think what it's like when it's over 40. It also caused a lot of wildfires there. So we pray for the western area of Canada, especially British Columbia. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will protect the firefighters who are fighting these blazes in Canada, that you will protect them and that you will have to send the rain that they need to put them out. We pray too that the temperature there will drop and fall to what is a reasonable level, Lord. Heavenly Father, please watch over all the people in Western Canada and also the northwest of the USA. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we now join together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught his followers? As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. to use a second of our songs now as we just continue to reflect on and celebrate uh, all that has uh, just taken place uh, through the baptisms. We, uh, uh, I think this is Brandon's choice, wasn't it? The song Oceans that just speaks about this kind of this calling to follow God wherever he leads us. Uh, and so we're going to uh, use that to uh, respond together now. If you'd like to stand, please do stand.
grab yourselves a seat and I'm going to ask the, uh, the baptism candidates to come and stand at the front again. So we come now to uh, the commission and uh, congregation, you can see these words uh, on the screen as well. So if you want to kind of renew your own uh, commitment to walking uh, in the kingdom of Jesus, to following his lead, then you can uh, echo those words as well. Those who are baptised are called to worship and serve God. And so will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayer? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? With the help of God, I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? With the help of God, I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbour as yourself? With the help of God, I will. Will you acknowledge Christ's authority over human society by prayer for the world and its leaders, by defending the weak, and by seeking peace and justice? With the help of God, I will. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And a prayer of blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. The very last part of the, uh, the baptism service is the presentation uh, of candles. And so we're going to do that, uh, that now. is a reminder to each of you that Jesus is the light of the world, the one who shows you the way to go. I'm going to walk slowly, I only want to do this once. So church, receive this light, the light of Christ. Brandon, receive this light, the light of Christ. And Holly, receive this light, the light of Christ. And just as you stand there at a moment, there are some words for us to join in with. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and given us a place with the saints in light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amazing. So if you guys want to take those back to your seats a moment. I reckon the car park's an option. That's, um, that's what I reckon. Um, just a few notices before we, uh, before we head out, though. Um, three, three things to say, uh, really. Um, the first one is... Just recognising we are still waiting for a number of restrictions to, to lift and for more things to kind of happen a bit more normally than they are right now. Uh, it's tempting to think we've been back in the building for a couple of months. It's tempting to think this is what it looks like now. But just to kind of remind us, we're still wrestling week by week with what we can and can't do and how best to do things. So this is not the finished article. We've, uh, we've managed to get the crash space available for this morning. There's other work going on behind the scenes to try and make sure our children's groups and children's provision uh, can continue to grow as the weeks go by. We've got some drinks available for the first time this morning. So if you haven't already been asked, then as we head outside to the car park to sing in a moment, 
Uh, you'll be asked if you'd like a drink. You're very, very welcome to stay. Um, we'll be serving those outside only um, because that's the simplest way in terms of the restrictions. Uh, and, uh, and other things like, um, so far we've had communion at nine o'clock and, uh, and not communion for the 10.30 service. We have got a communion service coming up 10.30 on the 18th of July. Uh, and thereafter, communion, I think, will happen a bit more frequently in the 10.30 as well. But just, yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge things are not yet how we would like them to be. Um, so if you're feeling a bit frustrated with that, do let us know. Uh, do let us know which things you're struggling with the most, and we'll kind of keep that in mind as we keep reviewing things. Um, the other two things just to mention are um, garden party on Thursday. Um, so this Thursday at the Vicarage, we're opening our garden. Uh, Lydia is super excited to welcome you um, for that. Um, we, uh, we're limited to 30 people, so if you would like to come, we still have, I think, five, six spaces, something like that. Um, so if you would like to join in with that this Thursday, 10 till 12, uh, you are very, very welcome to, uh, to sign up. But please talk to Jess or myself before you go this morning so we know uh, we've got the right numbers and the right food and all of that. Uh, and then uh, the last thing to say is uh, just about this morning. I've just mentioned drinks. Uh, orders will be taken if they haven't already been as we head outside in a moment. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll worship on the car park. Uh, the last two songs that these guys have chosen we'll do outside so we can all sing together. Uh, and then uh, after we've had a chance to have a drink, you are all very, very welcome to come and continue celebrating with us either down the park or at the Vicarage Garden. Um, the gazebos are already set up at the Vicarage and we can have up to 30 people there. Uh, so we'll make a call in a few minutes as to which of those it will be. You are all very, very welcome uh, to come and join in with that. For now, we're going to make our way uh, outside. Um, so uh, again, if I could just remind us to follow the one-way system. So if you could come via the front here and back out to the porch that way. Uh, just all the usual reminders about just keeping our distance as we do that. Uh, and then I will see you on the car park in a few minutes to finish by singing together. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.